Hello there, my name is Favos Tanmoh and now we'll unveil the top news of recent days. Today is the 1st of March, so it would be logical to sum up the results of the Second War Winter. This year the enemy did not succeed in plunging Ukrainians into cold and darkness. The winter in Ukraine passed without blackouts. Instead, dozens of cities froze in Russia itself. People went out in the streets shouting Zamirzai, despite the fact that there were interruptions with the heating in the fierce Russian winter, even in the capital's quarters. During the winter, Ukrainian air defense forces repelled the largest combined missile attack in history, carried out with the use of hypersonic weapons. At the same time, the Ukrainians are successfully defeating the enemies known how daggers and zircons. By the way, during this speech yesterday, Putin talked about unattainable indicators of new superweapon developments. As we can see, zircons are not so unattainable. Even Putin is ashamed to talk about daggers, because almost all missiles launched over Ukraine were shot down, and the uniqueness of the Sarmat missile still needs to be proven. But whose effectiveness does not need to be proven? It is the Ukrainian maritime drones. During the winter, three Russian ships were sunk. Novocherkask, Ivanovets, Cezir Kunikov. And our air defense forces were also active. Especially in recent days, since February 17th, the Ukrainian air defense have destroyed certain enemy aircraft, mainly Su-34 and Su-35 fighter bombers. And during the winter, the Russian Federation lost two A-50 long-range radar detection and control aircraft, of which the enemy has very few units. Zeri. This year should be a time of real negotiation on accession to the EU. We can start as early as spring and take the first negotiation steps. This year should also be a time of maximum pragmatism in relation with our neighbors. Everyone sees that Russia is not going to stop. They, in Moscow, want an arms race and new waves of destabilization. That is why security cooperation agreements have been signed with Great Britain, Germany, France, Denmark, Canada and Italy. Significant international aid countries to arrive. The EU has approved the allocation of 50 billion euros to Ukraine. Thus, during the winter, the Russians managed to capture Avdiivka. But at what cost? The battle for Avdiivka has already become the largest in terms of Russian losses, both in equipment and manpower. By the way, the Russian leadership tried to capture the city for three months and only thanks to massive strikes with air bombs waiting a ton, they succeeded. That is why Russian planes started falling like that. We cannot allow their pilots to strike our defenders without an answer. The European Parliament adopted resolutions in support of Ukraine and condemning political repression in the Russian Federation against the opposition. The European Parliament confirmed by an absolute majority that the goal of its support for Ukraine is the military victory of our country and its return to control over all temporarily occupied territories. Members of European Parliament recognized that the efforts of international partners to support Ukraine are insufficient to overcome the Russian aggression. The resolution calls on the EU member states to take all necessary measures to fulfill the obligation to supply Ukraine with one million ammunition rounds as soon as possible. The European Parliament called for the strengthening of sanctions, the introduction of new restrictions and strict monitoring of their compliance. But the most important thing is that the Parliament officially declared for the first time that Russia needs de-imperialization. The EU, its member states and like-minded partners around the world must continue their political, economic, financial and military support for Ukraine, including support to civil society and long-term support for the reconstruction of Ukraine. And this is the best response to the oppressive and aggressive practices currently preparated by the Kremlin regime. It's convinced that Ukraine's decisive victory may lead to genuine changes in the system in the Russian Federation, in particular de-imperialization, decolonization and refederalization, all of which are necessary conditions for the establishment of democracy in Russia. European Parliament Resolution. I absolutely agree with the European parliamentarians. The only thing that is the victory of Ukraine not may lead, but will lead to gene changes in the system in the Russian Federation. Russia is on the verge of revolution. It could be. But Navalny is not General Lamarck, and Russians are not French. Once upon a time in post napoleonic France, Lamarck's funeral was the cause of the June rebellion. And now Navalny's funeral led to nothing. But the difficulties that the Russian authorities created indicate one thing. Putin is scared to death of Navalny, 
even after his death. And that he will become a symbol of protest, not in form, but in essence. The Kremlin is afraid that Navalny's image will become attractive to the protest masses of Russia. But what is surprising is the cowardice and besaveness of Putin's supporters and themselves who proposed to beat and imprison those who came to the funeral at the first opportunity. Uh, this intimidation of, of people who want to participate, who want to mourn Mr. Navalny and his, his memory. So this only proves to the whole world that the Kremlin's regime, this regard for human life, goes actually way beyond the life of a person. And it also proves that the, the Kremlin's regime is determined to continue to cover up the assassination, the killing of Mr. Navalny under the uh, oversight of the regime. And uh, everyone who wants to pay tribute in Russia to Mr. Navalny publicly faces repressions. Hundreds of people have been detained only for the fact that they laid flowers. They need to be, they need to be of course, released. So this is just uh, underlining the, 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 the inhuman nature of the regime, how Mr. Navalny has been handled, how, his, uh, how the aftermath of his unfortunate death has been handled. And uh, this leaves us, uh, again, only with the only option to, to pay tribute as much as we can on behalf of the European Union to Mr. Navalny and express once again again, solidarity with his family, with his friend and with his work for a better Russia. By the way, Navalny's funeral was another test for the politician's family. The body was not given to relatives for more than a week. In Moscow, it was unofficially forbidden to hold a memorial service for Putin's enemy. And relatives barely found a place in the cemetery. And now the Russian mass media say that few people came to say goodbye to the politician. By the way, those who came have already begun to be detained. How unexpected. Let's hope that the ambassadors of the USA, France, Germany and other European countries who also came to say goodbye to Navalny will not be detained. By the way, Navalny's parents, Anatoly and Lyudmila Navalny, as well as his mother-in-law, were allowed into the cemetery. That concludes our today's video. Thank you for watching. Stay updated, comment, like and subscribe to our UETV English channel for more news from Ukraine. Your support is that really matters. Goodbye.